When you receive all the antenna equipment, unpack and inspect the components and hardware to ensure that all parts have been received in good condition. Metal components may contain sharp edges. Use care when unpacking and handling antenna parts. Make sure all components are included and undamaged. Also included in the package is the hardware to assemble the antenna. Make sure all hardware is included. Have spare nuts, bolts, or screws on hand in case you lose those provided in the kit. To assemble this antenna, you will need the following tools. Before installing the antenna, you need to select a site. The first and most important consideration when choosing a prospective site is whether the site can provide an acceptable line of sight to the satellite. Choose a site where the antenna will be able to receive the strongest signal available. A clear, unobstructed view of the southern sky is necessary for proper transmission. Consider obstructions that may occur in the future, such as construction in the area or the growth of trees. Also consider potential ground sources when choosing a location. Once you have your site, start by installing the modem. You must install the satellite modem before installing the antenna to determine the proper antenna pointing values. Before installing the antenna, you must first install a suitable antenna mount. Before you install the antenna onto the mast pipe, use a bubble level to ensure that the mast pipe is plump. Check the mast in two positions at right angles to each other. Slide the antenna assembly down onto the mast so that the AZEL mount fits onto the mast. Place the reflector bracket against the face of the AZEL mount. Make sure that the AZEL mount fits inside the lip of the reflector support. Rotate the polarization plate so that the five holes line up with the corresponding holes in the AZEL mount. Insert five carriage bolts through the polarization plate and into the corresponding holes in the AZEL mount. From the opposite side of the reflector bracket, Place a hex flange nut on each bolt and tighten the nut slightly, only until snug. When the reflector bracket is correctly attached to the AZEL mount, you can see the tilt scale numbers above the tilt pointer. The tilt pointer should be set to zero. Lock down the five bolts. Line up the holes on the reflector with the holes on the reflector bracket. Insert six thread cutting screws into the holes in the reflector bracket and through the corresponding holes in the reflector. Tighten the screws using a 5 16 inch wrench. Insert a carriage bolt into the pocket of the feed tube adapter. Place the feed tube adapter onto the feed support arm and secure it in place with two carriage bolts. Snugly fasten each of the two carriage bolts in place with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a hex nut. Swing the feed support arm assembly upward and use a flat washer, lock washer, and hex nut to secure it to the reflector. Attach the reflector support to the feed tube adapter using four screws, four flat washers, and four lock washers. Attach the side rods to the reflector dish using two carriage bolts. Loosely secure both bolts with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a hex nut. Loosely attach the feed support arm to the side rods using a single hex bolt and two flat washers, a lock washer, and a hex nut. Make sure to place washers on both sides of the feed support arm. Tighten all screws on the assembly until snug.
The radio assembly will be mounted on the feed support arm. Position the radio assembly above the feed support arm so that the feed horn faces the reflector. Guide the two tabs on the underside of the radio assembly into the bracket on the end of the feed support arm so that they fit into the guides on the inside of the bracket. Be sure that the tooth key on the bracket fits into the slot on the underside of the radio. Insert the M4 Phillips head screw up through the feed support arm bracket from underneath and into the threaded socket on the bottom of the radio. Tighten until snug. Proceed to connect the antenna to the radio assembly.